All right, folks, we are back. We apologize. We're going to do this again, third time, and hopefully third time's a charm. But I let's... think we're good this time because last time over here with the, uh, uh, the, the, the transfer rate going on over here, it was it was showing it just X'd out, but it was still going, and we were still streaming. Now it's actually showing the transfer rate uh, of the uh, of the actual stream going, so we should be good. Point is, uh, we're back. Yay! Uh, this uh, is such a wreck. I'm sorry, guys. This wasn't supposed to happen like this tonight. We apologize. All right. Well, let's go ahead and move on then. I think we've talked enough about the, the Daniel Bryan and his. Not because we hate him, but because we want him to fucking live. Dude, please, for God's sake. Now, this is something I do take an issue with. This is the bad match of the night, and it is a tag match, player. Uh -huh. Uh. As part of the AEW World Tag Team Championship Tournament, the best friends go up against the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions, representing the Undisputed Kingdom, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett. All right, so that would be the best friends. Uh... That representing best friends is Trent Beretta and, of course, <sighs> AE I'm going to say it, AEW's mascot at this point, freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy. Thank you. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Get back, beat it. We're running behind, damn it. Good I am on my I'm on my phone because of my home internet is not working for some reason. Uh, Frontier Internet. Ah, Frontier. I hate it. I'm sorry to hear that, Matthew Coburn. Glad that you joined us here. Welcome to Wrestle Rewind. Yay! But that being said, okay. And oh, and Vicentis over here. Yeah, we're back again. I was saying Brian Danielson's comment looks sort of weak now about Miz, quote unquote, wrestling like a coward. Oh, yeah. yeah that whole shit where he was talking about the Miz wrestling soft in 2016 back in Talking Smack because yeah. that was memorable. Yeah, no, like, because uh, I don't know about you. I'd rather wrestle strong. Uh, I'd rather wrestle uh, soft style, quote, uh, quote unquote, and have a career that lasts me forever without killing myself too horribly. Then go as strong and as hard and as badass as I can, and only running for like two or three years more. Uh, yeah, no, I get you. But getting back to the tag match now, the tag match was not bad by any means. Both teams brought their A game, and they actually brought out the best of each other in in, in this contest. Um, my only issue with this tag match, I'm not going to waste too much time on it. My only issue is that the undisputed kingdom lost to the best friends. The best friends won. Um, even with even with outside interference from the uh, AEW International Champion Roderick Strong, like the Undisputed Kingdom was still outdone by not just uh, Arge Cassidy and Trent Beretta, but also from an injured Chuck Taylor who was at ringside. Seriously? Yeah. What the hell? Wow, they're throwing everything at these guys. So let me explain why this was a bad. This was bad. The match was great. The finish was horrible, and I'm going to say this right now. The Undisputed Kingdom, they're being booked like a bunch of losing dorks in the first quarter of 2024. And what's more, these guys have championships. Uh, but then again, this is AEW, so championships don't really matter. But what, what they have is like they're supposed to be like, oh, we're taking over, we're taking down everyone, and we're going to make our presence known. Oh, yeah, sure, by getting whipped by these freaking... These freaking like Twizzler noodle arm motherfuckers by the AEW mascot and his best friends, right? Yeah, no. These are the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions, and they're getting and they're getting beat up by best friends, and they lost on TV. Oh, and by the way, their other partner, Roderick Strong, who's the international champion, the newly crowned champion, got his ass beat too. Way to put over your new champs. Are you serious? No, no, well, yeah. he didn't lose the yeah. title, thankfully, but no, he okay. got his ass beat up when he was trying to help the uh, Undisputed Kingdom win. And it still wasn't enough. Yeah, no, seriously. Like, they started off in such a high, uh, like, such a high profile. They they were, they were beat up MJF at the end of they World's They sidelined him so hard that he's no longer appearing on their website. But they, it's all kayfabe because he's really there. Yeah. He they try in AEW. They tried to set up Not their, happened. they tried to set up their championship rivalry feud with Samoa Joe. And Wardlow lost. Wardlow lost to Joe. The Undisputed Kingdom have been picking up losses on AEW Dynamite TV. Roderick Strong is 
apparently shown to be an ineffective champion, like he runs in to help his friends and get his ass kicked. What the fuck? And does any of this make a lick of fucking sense to anyone else? Not to me. No, clearly not. I don't know what they're doing. No, no, no shit don't make sense. No, but we have to make the the we have to make the mascot look good, don't we? I'm just saying, man. The booking of Honor No More and back in Impact Wrestling made more sense than this. Yeah. Roderick Strong as the coach for the Diamond Mine made more sense than this. This shit don't make sense. It's just dumb. It is incredibly dumb. And to crank the dumbo meter even higher, before their tag ma- uh, their tournament tag match, we got an uh, pre- we got an uh, uh, interview segment featuring Renee Paquette and the AEW Executive Vice Presidents Matthew and Nicholas Jackson, the Bucks. I'd call them young, but uh, no. Nick's, uh, Nick's, uh, uh, Nick's thing hair, Nick's hair leaves, yeah, Nick's hair leaves a lot and, to be desired. Okay, what did these morons do now? Well, first of all, uh, Nick got heated up against Renee when Renee brought up their first tag team loss against Private Party at Dynamite back in 2019. And that was, a, that, was a, that was a wound that she apparently poured salt into. And then Matt Jackson got on the mic and uh, he was bragging and boasting that they were going to... Uh, I can't remember the word specifically because Matt talks like an idiot. But basically, they're trying to correct their mistakes, and they're going to face, uh, and they're going to face Private Party tonight and win, and then they're going to take back their AEW World Tag Team Titles. And and they also like we're trying to coach Renee, saying like, "Hey, Renee, by the way, you're doing a great job, but uh, you should smile more," you know. Like, is this bitch serious? This bitch is serious. I hated this segment, internet, this interview segment. They don't know how to talk. They don't know how to talk. They don't know how to present themselves as actual heels. They just think that, oh, hey, if we're joking about how much of an egomaniacs we are, we can't possibly be egomaniacs. Except you fucking are, you little losers. Actually, come to think of it, I'm trying to think of something. Hang on a minute. They're over here trying to break, K- trying to blend kayfabe and, and failing miserably. And failing miserably, you know, showing off that they're, you know, yeah, they're they're in a position of power, you know, they're the heels. And then I'm trying to think, like, this can't be a coincidence with WWE, like having their program with The Rock, pretty much actually bl- being a heel, actually being a heel, and yeah, announcing that he's part of the board of TKO and yelling at everyone like, "I'm your boss." Yeah, it's like WWE is doing it much better with and Cody. They yeah, they're doing yeah. WWE is actually doing the elite's fucking gag better than they can. Do you know why? Why? A simple, simple word. Oh, they may be bosses, all right. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> uh oh. <clears throat> I, I I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let, let this speak for itself. Oh. Yeah. No. Hang on. Hang on a minute, folks. Juan's gonna sh- Juan's gonna tell us very soon. There is a reason Juan's building it up. He's building up. You had the gif. You had it. Just go with that one. That's fine. Doesn't have to yeah. be perfect. Yeah. Well, was, I demand perfection with my gifts and shit. Listen, guys. <laughs> There's a difference between WWE's presentation of the main bad guy yeah, the, being the, part the, of the, the b- way that they use their heel managers and the way that AE, the, the, their heel boss uh, gimmick and the way AEW uses heel boss gimmicks. And, the and no- they may be bosses, but they're not the final boss like uh, The Rock has been calling himself. And one word. You want to know what the difference is between them, Jose? What's the difference? Presentation! Oh! The Rock feels like a threat. The Rock feels like... Wait, what the fuck am I even doing here? Get, up, get away. Get, oh no, is no. this it? Are yeah, we tagging it? Shut up! Okay, hot shut tag up. to one. No. Ah. I'm tagging myself in. Give that... Yeah, there. Please be careful, my drink is there. Hey folks, Juan Rouse, one of the heads of Ravens Falcon Tech Guru of the team, and the, Jose's tag partner on Wrestle Rewind, and I tag myself in because quite frankly, I am tired of spouting my wrath behind the camera. It needs to be seen. It needs to be felt. It can be heard, but not listened. Unless you see me. Can you see me? Because I can't see you. 
ta 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 How the hell is it that these two doofuses, Nick and Matt Jackson, who legitimately had positions as executive vice presidents for All Elite Wrestling, how is it that they did not attempt at capitalizing on the gimmick of them being heel bosses before the, the uh, 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 before this shit happened uh, with the whole uh, all out brawl out stuff? Why didn't they try to use this a little bit sooner? That might have actually given them a little bit more of the uh, imposition uh, imposing threat feeling that they're trying to go for. Instead of the smarmy little uh, little uh, jackasses that they are, show the jackasses as a please. Oh boy, here we go. J- Hang j- on. J- yeah, these smirking smarmy little assholes. And the problem with it all, once again, as I hate to say, but I have to say, the fish rots from the head down. So all this can be laid at the laps at the lap of Tony Goddamn Khan. He doesn't keep his people in control. He doesn't like being a boss. He likes having friends. He likes having people that he thinks he can surround himself with in order to be cool, in order to be able to play with them. It's not play. It's a business. It's professional wrestling. Hey, you two twiddle D and twiddle fuck off. Why don't you two get your heads out of your asses? Come with me to this hotel room. I'm fucking mediating this shit. I'm not fucking bringing a lawyer. I'm mediating this shit myself because I got a pair of uh, of freaking grapefruits on myself. And we're going to settle this shit between you two motherfuckers and my uh, and my uh, uh, biggest golden goose here, CM Punk. Oh, wait, I can't. It hurts your feelings too much. Oh, hey, guys. Why don't you go? Why don't you actually, if you're going to exercise this, uh, your 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 actual authority as uh, executive vice president and throw your weight around? Why don't we actually try to turn that into a story and get people to legitimately lean in on that and hate you guys for it in order to build a proper storyline out of it? Oh wait, you can't. It hurts your feelings too much because the young bucks don't want to do business with CM Punk. No, I'm talking about even before CM Punk. Even before Punk showed up. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, they had plenty of time and they had plenty of opportunities in order to get this shit uh, uh, and capitalize on it even before CM Punk showed up, but they didn't. And now we got shit that came up, the, like I said, because this, uh, this attitude comes from the top, the fish rots from the head down. Yes, I'm going to fucking bring it up. You're not, I'm not sorry. You're, you're, wait, right here. I'm going to show you what I mean. Give me my phone. Don't look at my stuff. You're fine. You know. Look at my stuff. But no, Juan's got a point. I guess now would be a good time to bring up the uh, the latest uh, social media controversy going on right now. Speaking of the fish rotting from, uh, from the head up. From the head down. From the, the head, head from down. From the head down. Fish rots from the head down. So last night's episode... What am I doing yelling at you from over here? So last night's episode of AEW Dynamite was in Quebec City, Quebec, in Quebec, Canada, right? Yep. Okay. This is the sh- uh, this is a shot from the arena at the beginning of the show. It's this is unacceptable. Yeah, you're going to sell out the arena if you have like nine tenths of the arena fucking walled off. It seats how many people over 10,000? That's not even two. That's not that's not even 2,000 people. Yeah, that's very sad. Now you can see the little sky boxes over there between the 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 first level and uh the the upper levels there. You see a couple of people in sky boxes, although I doubt that the sky box uh prices uh were all that, you know, in terms of uh, being uh, being uh, avoided and shit. Now, you'd think that this kind of attitude would that these kind of results would spur somebody into action. It doesn't. And go ahead and sh- uh, go ahead and uh, t- uh, g- uh, pull up the Sports Skeeta article, Jose, uh, which is right uh, no on the browser. Yep. Okay, so. No, that's a response on this is a the okay, Sportskeeda article. 
Yep. Yeah. I'm clicking on it, but it's not. Oh, uh, come on. Man. Okay. So go ahead and uh, 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 so you got to love this I- I- idiocy over here. C- uh, cook that uh, uh, two-time wrestle failure TK. Tony Khan's insulting remark about WWE legend breaks the internet. Uh, it, now, I'm going to go ahead and read this off to you guys. AW uh, CEO Tony Khan recently took a major job, the jab at a WWE veteran Eric Bischoff, which has set the internet on fire. Some of the fans have sided with TK and called Bischoff a failure. Uh, Eric Bischoff had consistently taken major jobs at the Jacksonville-based promotion and Tony Khan, the form, uh, 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 and Tony Khan, the former Raw general manager, openly criticized Khan for bringing Kazuchika Okada to the company, claiming that nobody knew who he was. The Hall of, the WWE Hall of Famer also took issue with Mercedes Monet's arrival at Big Business and stated that her debut won't spike the ratings of the company's television shows. Tony Khan has finally uh, broken his silence on Bischoff's criticism and uh, after it was announced that the former WCW uh, owner would be wi- uh, winding up his uh, Strictly Business podcast, at, rather winding down, as in he's going to be ending that podcast. On Twitter, the C- AEW CEO took a massive shot at Bischoff while teasing all Elite Wrestling's next media deal, in which case Tony fucking Khan fucking uh, puts this up. Go ahead and show that. His fucking tweet, uh, replying to uh, the announcement from Ad Free Shows. No, no, just just scroll, just scroll. All right, scrolling down. Yeah. Sunsetting this fraud of a business podcast before the next AEW media deal is a wise choice. Fucking douchebag. Some like AEW Dynamite. <laughs> Like a fucking idiot. Some fans came in support of the uh, All Elite CEO. Cook that two-time wrestler said, uh, creative has nothing for you at TKO shareholder. Crazy101 underscore says, Tony not playing around. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's yeah. Uh, let's see. Mike. Mike. No, uh, we're not going to repeat that word. Mike yeah. K word. Yeah, uh, he's mad AEW won't give him any more free money. Uh, Tony, you should be grateful that Uncle Eric mentions your mess of a show, uh, which is like uh, the, on the other side. However, the majority sided with Eric Bischoff. Uh, let's see, AEW is the worst product in the history of wrestling. Calling this a fraud of a business podcast? Keep scrolling, is a. Uh, let's see, uh, when your entire company is a fraud, worry about your own ratings and losses, man. Imagine being worried about Bischoff while running a wrestling company with three quarter empty buildings. See, Jesus Christ. It just keeps going. You, you see what I mean? It's it's like, uh, like for once in your life, Tony, be the bigger man. Some of us like you both. Um, like fucking, uh, this should be, uh, this should make media companies happy. happy. Expanding the hard cam side is a wild style of booking. And then this one right here. Let me see if I can expand that. Yeah. And, LOL. Imagine running a elite company that is struggling to fill small arenas and hit good ratings. And you put your energy into Twitter. How about getting better use out of that amazing, talented roster and just worrying about the product for us fans? Get off Twitter, says Justin M. At J Ma Zero J My Zero Two. What the heck? I don't know. Uh, yeah. So Eric Bischoff recently issued a warning to Tony Khan signing a top uh, agent in AEW. Yeah. The okay. So that's in regards to what he said about Will Ospreay and Kazuchika Okada and uh, Mercedes Monet, the three new signees that came to AEW. All in consecutive motion. Uh, scroll, uh, uh, scroll down, see if there's anything more in the article here. Nope. Okay, I think that's it. All right, so uh, you can cut back to me. You can. Right. You, the, the point is, fucking idiot, Tony Khan. That idiot. Uh, that idiot. Stupid boy attitude of Neener Neener. Uh, 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 trying to take this kind of shit instead of you know rising above it, being a businessman, focusing on your work, and doing everything in your power to get those seats filled. Paper the building if you have to. Go to these fucking radio stations and get them to give OA tickets ahead of time. Do that. Build that shit up. Get people wanting to get behind AEW. But this kind of fucking attitude is exactly why... A lot of folks are turned off at the product because, like we say, the fish rots from the head down. The idiot attitudes that we've got from the Young Bucks, it's not like they come come up with that horseshit all on their ownsies. They did get the idea from of uh, being this, uh, the, the ratchet little heel bitches that they are uh, and thinking that that'll make them cool uh, heels by 
seeing how people were talking about it and not striking uh, while the iron was hot, while they still had CM Punk on there, while he was still suspended, and maybe doing everything in their power to try and needle people while they're on it and actually get people to hate them. No, instead they ran away like little bitches, and they hide away behind their keyboards, behind their Twitter fingers, and they fucking come back months later, and they fucking uh, uh, throw in on, on this bad cosplay of a boss gimmick. And they get that from hanging around with Tony goddamn Khan. <sighs> Tony, get over yourself. Boy, you're older than I am by only a couple of years, but you act like a petulant little bitch child who tries to act like a big man while you're a freshman in high school. Motherfucker, I don't care how rich you are. You're an idiot. You are a very wealthy moron, and you have not earned the respect of people in the professional wrestling community. People don't actually respect him. They like him because he's sticking it to other guys that they don't like because they're it's because they're receiving criticism that they can't uh, handle. Like, oh no, please don't 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 uh, criticize my wrestling. Where we have guys like Eddie Kingston, who if he wrestled smart, he would be the next Dusty Rhodes. He could be that kind of a underdog badass. But instead, he's over here. Acting like a like he acts like a fucking street bum. He f wrestles like a fucking street bum. He does those stupid little multi mini chops that d don't that look faker than they are, and punches people in the in the in the head for real, legitimately, and making those f f real punches look fake. Instead, because he acts like a fucking moron, because he doesn't have people who are trying to guide and coach him. You want to be independent. You want to have your own say. Fine, that's not a problem. But the, uh, the fact of the matter is, if he was in WWE, they would whip his ass into shape and have him looking and uh, and presenting himself like a fucking hero every single time, no matter fucking what. We've got motherfuckers like uh, fucking Daniel Bryan. God almighty, I, uh, we, we just uh, had a whole rant earlier about how Daniel yeah. Bryan, he, he's like, oh, he's only had like, what, maybe two or three years left in his in his rest in ring career full time. If he stuck with WWE, if he swallowed his fucking pride, he'd have extended that for another six, maybe seven. Now that I think about it. But instead, he surrounded himself in a culture where everyone's hitting each other fucking hard, breaking each other's fucking faces for, like, near-empty arenas, for fucking nobody. And then you have idiots like the, uh, like, uh, like the Young Bucks over here, who think they're the biggest, hottest shit because they managed to con a fucking idiot out of his money by playing up to him, by sucking up to his ass, by calling him their best friend. And that's all he could have ever wanted. And the fucking idiot fans who continue to harbor that horse shit are just as bad. And their asses are the reason why you can't get a fucking good, a big enough audience. Because if you don't know who the hell any of the wrestlers are, instead of having people encourage you and want you to, uh, and, and want you to uh, like, well, why don't you come and watch this match? I'll tell you all about him. And we'll, uh, uh, and we'll fucking explain why this guy's a big deal and why you should cheer for him. Why you should cheer for Okada. Why you should cheer for Sky Blue. Why you should cheer for Willow Nightingale. Why you should be cheering for uh, fucking even Orange Cassidy, motherfucker. Why the Undisputed Kingdom should be a major threat in AEW. Why you should be cheering for uh, people like uh, like like, like uh, Tony Storm. But no, instead, they snob at your face like, no, you don't really understand what real wrestling's about. Why don't you go back and watch your sports entertainment soap opera and just go and watch your, your sports entertainment Go and just watch, you can just a super nobody. You don't know what real wrestling's really all about. Yeah. You remember that stupid ass fucking music video that of all fucking people, Enzo Amore fucking put out? When he was talking about how his, his consensual penis. You remember how he remember that started bullshit. that fucking music video making fun of uh, pro wrestling nerds? Those fucking guys, that caricature that Enzo Amore put in front of your faces, that's what you motherfuckers actually act like. And it's fucking disgusting. It's fucking uh, d deranged to have that kind of mentality. You motherfuckers got brain worms. 
coming out of your ears and crawling out from your ass. Go shower. Go fucking meet a woman. Go to uh, go uh, go to Nevada outside of Clark County. Prostitution is legal there. Go get yourself laid. For Christ's sake, people. Grow the fuck up. Should, Under- we, go ahead and, should we go ahead and share uh, Eric Bischoff's retort? By all means. Here's what Eric Bischoff, Bischoff had to say in response to Tony Khan's tweet. Hear it. Oh, wrong one. Sorry. There we go. And I quote... A money mark with no talent other than spending daddy's money going all the way to Canada to draw less than 4000 in front in one of the hottest pro wrestling markets in North America talking about quote wise choices strap in it's going to be a fun day Yeah Yeah Eric Bischoff can say this shit because he speaks from experience. Yeah, he fumbled the ball in the last years of of WCW, and he will be the first motherfucker to tell you that. He will be the first one. He knows when he fucks up. He's not over here trying to fucking throw the blame at any fucking buddy else. You can cut away from that now. You can go back to us. He's not going to fucking try and shirk responsibility. He's not going to fucking try and t- say, oh, well, it's, uh, it's actually the fans' fault. They're not really fucking going in with AEW, uh, with, with WCW. What is it, Jose? Oh, my, uh, my, 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 my thing. You're, you're, get, you're, get, take your candy with you. Okay, go on. But And he'll fucking actually admit when he fucks up and when something is stupid because he has that b- uh, business experience. He's trying to be a fucking coach to your sorry ass, Tony, and you're too fucking stupid with your head up your own ass smelling farts that you then bottle and ship off to Dave Meltzer who snorts that shit like somebody huffing glue and gives you 99 stars out of every fucking day because you can do no wrong because you keep showing off garbage wrestling not even good garbage wrestling now we've got motherfuckers breaking themselves for near empty buildings it's embarrassing you should be fucking ashamed of yourself tony but the problem is your ass has never known shame because you've insulated your whole fucking life. You've hidden behind screens your whole fucking teenage life. And I should know, I used to be the same way until I got laid like a normal human being. Get your ass laid. Prostitution's legal in Nevada outside of Clark County. Motherfucker, you idiot. Maybe if you got your dick wet, acted like a man, Get off the fucking Twitter machine and actually run yourself, run your company like a business instead of your own personal fucking playhouse collection. Maybe, just maybe, you wouldn't be playing to empty buildings every single week where you have people on your hard cam side taking those photos of the empty buildings, embarrassing you in your fucking face. Fucking idiot. Now I'm done. Get off me. Get away from me. Okay, okay. You're not going to tag me in? There, tag yourself in. God damn it. I am not, I do not give a damn anymore. Watcher, you keep eating those pork rinds. You need something to munch on. You know what? I think I will. Vicente Guerrero in the chat. The only negative about Juancho's rants on Tony Khan to AEW is that he speaks too kindly of them. Uh, scary thought of even mentioning Enzo Amore as TNA or AEW could sign him. I'd rather he, uh, I, I'd rather have to actually watch Enzo actually sh- uh, 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 shit fight with Joey Janela. Jesus. That dude. would be horrible, man. All right. Now, before we get into the main event, there is one honorable mention that I do want to bring up, and it is a video clip. Uh, that they showed on Dynamite featuring uh, Darby Allen, who was over at a skate park with uh, uh, skateboarding legend Tony Hawk. Yay! What's he doing with Tony Hawk other than well, being on crutches? Well, right now, um, uh, he did announce that unfortunately his uh, he he won't be able to climb Mount Everest because of his foot injury. Um, that was why they uh, that that was uh, th- that was uh, why he's taking time off. But oh. he is partnered with t- with Tony Hawk, and apparently they're going to be uh, working on a skate park pro- project. They're going to be opening up skate parks all over the United States for for the youth, for kids to to have a place to uh, go and uh, skate, and you know. Can, uh, socialize and you know have fun and that's uh, good yeah that's great See, like, I, can, I can get behind this kind of shit this is nice this is very nice and folks need to remember before becoming a professional wrestler darby allen was a pro skater so this is right up his alley well yeah and then he became a jackass and then he got into pro wrestling and nitro circus let's not forget that I will always forget that, because I don't even know what the fuck that is. He gets a pass from me, because you know what? This is actually good. This is good for the community. This is good for the kids. And 
What's wrong with that, right? Yeah, baby face him a little more, folks. That's always nice. Get better soon. Yes, please get better soon. Quit being soon. an idiot. Don't throw yourself in real glass. Uh, don't climb out Everest, dude. No, That's... he can climb out Everest next year if he wants. He'll probably, uh, it'll, it'll be fucking crazy and stupid, but he can climb it if he wants. Just I... uh, remember, there's plenty of uh, frozen bodies up there. Uh, all right. Wasn't it? Uh, oh, yeah. No, who, who was it who said that? I think it was. Oh, no, never mind. I don't know, but let's get to the main event of this week's edition of AEW Dynamite, and this is a number one contenders match, uh, a, a singles one on one featuring uh, a, a, representing the Don Callis family is Kanosuke Takeshita, the alpha male, going one on one against Swerve Strickland, and I'm gonna say this right now, even though this was a great match, it's already a foregone conclusion of who was going to win. We're going with that that route again. Come on, guys. Because well, well, truthfully, I'd rather it be, yeah, like let's not lie, like we we know we know it's gonna be Swerve, but truthfully, it's 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 uh, I, I prefer it be Swerve. Yeah, I know. I mean, there's, I mean, there's who else? Like, I don't hear anybody chanting uh, for uh, Kanosuke to catch it because Don Callis destroyed all that, and I yeah, mean, you can't get away from this. Go get your vibe with us, bro. When I drop the yes. big pressure, I bro. He was at ringside hyping up the Canadian swear, crowd. Drive, he was chanting, "Whose house? Swell's house." Exactly. Thank Ce you. Sont f- les, 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 les causes du du uh, square cyclone. Huh? Sacré I, I bleu. Sacré bleu. Titi cochon. Huh, huh. Oui, oui. But that being said. Despite the foregone conclusion, they did put on a pretty solid wrestling match. Um, of course, uh, the story is that Kenosuke Takeshita is working over the midsection of Swerve Strickland, and um, and this and and, uh, and and Swerve was getting worked over in the gut during the main event. Um, there and, and, and there were some moments where Swerve got in a bit of offense. Um, he hits the kill shot onto Kenosuke Takeshita. Um, he tried to hit the house call the first time. He was, uh, but uh, Takeshita was able to roll over to the apron. So Swerve hit the house call onto onto Takeshita while sitting in the ring apron before eventually hitting the house call back inside in in the middle of the ring. So that was cool. That's nice. That's I nice. Can dig it. Of course, of course, and uh, and uh, and uh, and like uh, and of course. Uh, Don Callis being the usual Don Fallis idiot that he is. He's over here talking it up on commentary like, oh yeah, this is a great professional wrestling match. You know, oh, no, 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 no. I can't keep up. <laughs> imagine going to your home. Co- I said this last week. Imagine going to your home country and that's they still- and they don't like you. <laughs> right. Well, that's what you fucking get. <laughs> like an ass. Like an ass. Oh, man. But that being said, um... Despite a great showing from Kanosuke to Keshida, like they, like he was, he was really bringing the fight to Swerve, but Swerve was able to hit the house call, and then he hits his finishing move, the JML driver, to pin and win. Your winner and big shock, the number one contender to Samoa Joe's AEW World Title at Dynasty next month, Swerve Strickland. Yay! Let's keep fucking hangnail out of it this time. Yes, please, let's keep him out of it, for fuck's sake. By the way, speaking of Hangman Adam Page, I went and actually watched the Texas Deathmatch at Full Gear with Swerve, and oh my god, it was so disgusting. It was so So you saw the whole match. I saw the whole match. I spared you, Juan. I watched it, so you don't have to watch it. Dog Walker is going to sue you now. Oh no no no! Lawsuits no. for days. Well, psh, oh, please, whatever, man. He he can he can he can stick it. All no, right. Now let's go ahead and get over to this week's edition of TNA Impact. Yeah. And this week's uh, Impact was uh, showing off their tapings from uh, uh, from them uh, heading to the twenty three hundred arena in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Like I mentioned at the beginning of our show, three videos ago, the crucible of the original ECW. Hells yeah, and we start things off white hot with an incredible 8-4-1 match as as, as 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 the knockouts take the stage. The mixed teams of... I've got Masha- it over here. Oh. On the left, you have the team of Havoc, Masha Slamovich, Alicia Edwards, and Jody Threat versus the team of Danny Luna, Zaya Brookside, Ash by Elegance, and Rosemary. However, there was a one minor change. Ash by Elegance was uh, uh, did not uh, uh, re- opted out of competing in this match, and in her place was 
You'll find you'll you'll uh, this will sound familiar to you, Juan. Eh? Steph Delander, the uh, the valet of the indie wrestling god himself, who made his return to TNA wrestling. Always ready, Matt Cardona. What? Nice. All right. So the valet of Matt Cardona took her place. Yes. Now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Fucking really, Ash. Now, the rules of this 8-4-1 match is simple. It starts off as an eight-person tag team match, and whoever scores the win for their team, the other team gets eliminated, and it turns into a fatal four-way match. The winner of the fatal four-way match wins the match. Exactly. Okay, understood. Exactly. Uh, and, 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 and yeah, the stipulation was weird, but this is a stipulation that I can actually get behind because it actually works and it's actually cool. So um, the team of Zaya Brookside was able to get the win over the over the over the uh, over the team of of uh, of Masha Slamovich, and so that team was eliminated. So we got some great uh, fatal four way action between Steph Delander, Rosemary, Zaya Brookside, and uh, Danny Luna. And but we also got some ring uh, some ringside chicanery from uh, Ash by Elegance. Is Ash by Elegance a Attacked Zaya Brookside at ringside, taking her out of commission throughout the rest of the opening match. Oh God damn it! I know, right? Damn, damn bitches! How dare be, they? Them bitches be crazy. They are crazy. And, and in the final seconds, in the final seconds of this uh, eight four one match, Matt Cardona gets into the ring and he lays out the radio silence onto, I believe it was onto Rosemary, so that Steph Delander can pin and win. Your winner and. Number one contender for the TNA Knockouts World Title against uh, Jordan Grace at Rebellion, Steph Delander. Shit, seriously? Wait a minute. If Steph Delander won, doesn't that mean that uh, Ash by Elegance won because he took her place? Nope. Steph Delander won, and she's going to be challenging for the title. And you bet your ass that Matt Cardona is going to play an X Factor into this rivalry because Matt Cardona's got a little bit of history with the current Knockouts World Champion, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. When uh, when uh, Matt Cardona was wrestling full-time with, uh, with in his run with uh, Impact, he was, I believe, the inaugural uh, Impact Wrestling Digital Media Champion. Nope. Jordan Grace oh, Jordan was. Jordan Grace was, and then he challenged her. Yes. Uh, a little bit of wrestling continuity. I hope they bring that back. I hope so, too. Oh, snap. All right, so, yeah, congratulations, uh, Steph Lander. So, Juan, your thoughts on the style of match at the 841 rules match? It's interesting because, uh, like, you should have each teammate, like, try to help each other out, but then the factor, the fact that uh, uh, the, the, the winning team next has to go up against each other, you don't know whether or not if you even want to get that opportunity, but you want your team to win so that you at least have the chance, so... This is interesting. I can live with this kind of match, so I love it. Hell's yeah! I love it when I love it when wrestling promotions are able to come up with these different match styles, and 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 if it works, then more power to them. You know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, uh, it, so yeah, not shocking that Alicia's team lost. Ow! Whoops! <laughs> All right, now let's get over to the exciting match of the night, and this was a great. One on one back and forth slugfest between. Ooh, I saw part of this one, yeah. Between the TNA, one half of the TNA World Tag Team Champions Eddie Edwards representing the system versus Speedball Mike Bailey representing Speedball Mountain. Yeah, this one was good, and uh, like I got to see uh, Speedball doing his Taekwondo shit up against Eddie Edwards's fat ass head. Oh yeah, and so much fun. Mike Bailey was laying out his array of uh, of martial arts offense as he hits uh, Eddie Edwards with a series of multiple roundhouse kicks to the uh, to the arms, to the midsection, to the heads. Eddie Edwards tried to reply back with hitting his right hands and his chops. It was a back and forth fight. It was a, uh, a scrap. It was a pure scrap in, in every defi- in every form of of the word. Um, uh, of course we of course. Pfft. We ha- we because we have to have ringside uh, 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 a Tom Foolery be- with with Trent Seven and Brian Myers and Alicia Edwards getting involved uh, trying to help out their respectable teammates um, and uh, Mike Bailey it looks like he was able to he was he was going to win he hits like what I like about his uh, offense move set is that Mike Bailey hits these like back and forth simultaneous roundhouse kicks with both left and right and yep. it's so cool to watch him I move at that speed. I kind of do that forever and a day ago. But, uh, uh, but, you know, uh, at the same time, I'm not as, uh, as, uh, nimble as I used to be. 
Same. <laughs> and as Mike Bailey, and it looked like Mike Bailey was going to win and uh, when he tries to go for the Ultimo uh, weapon, but Eddie Edwards was able to reverse it, hits the Boston Knee Party to pin and win. Your winner, Eddie Edwards. God damn it. Go damn. freaking figure. I guess the system overpowered Speedball Mike Bailey over here in the chat. It's great to see uh, Steph DeLander back. Uh, says Vicente Guerrero. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know what? Since leaving, since being fired from WWE, um, yeah, no, Steph Delander, she's been doing a great job as being the the partner in crime for Matt Cardona. And I think we've already said enough how Matt Cardona is having his own career renaissance, his own career resurgence in the independent world after being fired from WWE in 2020. I see. All right. Well, um, in any case, here, like I said, still, it's kind oh. of a. Uh, also, like, to see uh, Eddie Edwards win. Yeah, I know. Well, well, you know, his wife lost the opening match. We got to have him win to balance it out, right? Ha. Ha. All right. So suck on that, Alicia. Ha. Now let's get over to the exciting segment of the night. And we get another in-ring promo segment from the walking weapon. Canadian, The Canadian Iron Man himself. Former. former TNA world champion, Josh Alexander. All right. So uh, what is this? hardcore insane like he's basically the canadian kurt angle without the percocet i know right so josh alexander is in the mic and clearly still licking his wounds from losing to alexander hammerstone in their last pay-per-view event on sacrifice um josh alexander is looking it, it, it has his ring gear on and he's in the fighting town of philadelphia pennsylvania he puts over the town on how awesome it is and he's and he's and he signed apparently an open contract for an open challenge to any wrestler out there who's brave enough to take him on because he wants to exchange graps and I don't have a picture of it. Why do you have to call it Graps? That's such a weird-ass name. Well, trade hands? How would you... What? I mean... Anyways, um, the person to answer this challenge, and I, I unfortunately I don't have a picture of him, is a wrestler who goes by the name of Tracy Williams. Uh, Tracy Williams is a 20-year vet, and he is a former Ring of Honor World Television and Tag Team Champion. So, shit. So, spoiler okay, alert. Spoiler alert. They had a good wrestling match. Josh Alexander won. Hold, hold on a second. What happened, Case Storm? I just beat it. Yay, congratulations. I playing that one song. Yay! Oh, the, the, yay. Yeah. yeah, I know which one. Okay, I'll, 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 the, can, can I tell them? Is, is, it, is it okay? To get you can tell them. It's all right. Okay, uh, Case Storm is playing which one? Scarlet. Yeah, yeah. just got through playing Pokemon Scarlet, and the and she just beat every single one of the main quests, and it's playing the credits with uh, the Ed Sheeran song, Celestial. Oh, oh, that's so cool. So cool. All right. But now let's go ahead and move on. Um, surprisingly, there were no bad matches on this week's edition of TNA Impact. All the other matches hit uh, it did solid, and it was a lot of fun. There is one talk segment that we do want to talk about, and this one features um, the former WWE superstar Top Dollar, now going by AJ Francis, and his new partner in crime, Rich Swan. And we, me and Juan, we watched, and this video is apparently, this segment is supposed to explain why did Rich Swan turn into a bad guy? Why did he betray Joe Hendry? Why did he side with AJ Francis in the, one of the worst tag team names in wrestling? God and damn it. We saw son. it, what and we, me and Juan, we saw the segment, and it was bad. Like, it's, Rich Swan just kept on rambling and rambling on how he was a former TNA world champion, and he went on rambling about like how he felt like he lost his edge because he was not having a good winning streak. He was having a losing streak in wrestling. And AJ Francis was the only one, apparently, to come to his side backstage and remind him, dude, you're a former world champion. Like, he didn't say get your shit together, but like that was basically what he was trying to say. Get your Join me, and together we shall help you succeed in wrestling again. Because I know how to succeed in wrestling. I... Jump at the opportunities for success. Oh yeah, he I really knows how to... uh, straddle the line when it comes to uh, being a, a incredible uh, professional. Uh, and then hang time jokes. Hang time jokes. And then of course AJ Francis closes it off, uh, declaring their tag team name. They're called First Class, and they close off their whole promo segment by saying, "If you're not first class, then you're last." Yeah. Gee, that's uh, that rings Bobby's a little, gonna sue somebody. Yeah, I was gonna say that rings a little bit similar to uh, to a popular NASCAR racer from Talladega. 
Yeah, seriously, Ricky Bobby is legitimately going to sue somebody now. Also, what the fuck, AJ Francis? I liked you better when you were a top dollar in WWE. I like. Listen, I'm not gonna knock on him about the no fly zone shit. As long as he's nowhere near, as, as long as they enforce the no mic zone on him, unless he's rapping. Uh, I wouldn't even really want to hear him rapping this, that much these days. Because if he's like, he's he's still has more of the rapper mindset. Like he's still got more of the mindset of a guy who's not really a uh, um who's not really heavily invested in uh pro in his uh pro wrestling career. How he's trying to use it as a as a as a uh, what do you call it? Just as a way, a just a way to make money. Yeah, as a way to make money and a way to promote his music. It's kind of how it feels, but at the same time, I'm not going to assume to know what's in a man's heart or in his head. But that's how it kind of comes off. I'm just letting you know that's how it appears to anyone who doesn't know better. But at the same time, Rich Swan teaming up with <sighs> Evil AJ Francis being a uh, evil heel. Ah, uh, but like the thing is, it kind of didn't land quite as hard yeah as no wanted. i'm not i'm not the, the the fan reaction didn't help either yeah the fans you know, were definitely not into it yeah well because uh, like dude they're never gonna forgive you for the uh no fly zone bit and uh they'll never let you live that down uh try to take that shit in stride is the only thing that you can do with rich swan as his partner uh aj francis might learn how to dive this time lol ah su uh, suck and alicia edwards in the same <sighs> sentence Every guy's dream. Says all this for says Vicente Guerrero. Lol. Lol. Now, before we get to the main event, we do have an honorable mention to bring up here for this week's edition of TNA Impact. TNA mentioned that uh, the current X Division champion, Mustafa Ali, is on the cover of this month's uh, Pro Wrestling Illustrated magazine. And it's going to be available on newsstands on April 16th. And the digital issue is available right now on their website, pwi-online.com. So, you know what? Congratulations to Mustafa Ali. I think he put out a tweet um, saying that in his 20-year wrestling career, this is, like, we've talked about this. This is his first major uh, major championship that he has captured in his in his 20-year career in pro wrestling. So, good for him. He deserves it. Give Mustafa Ali his due. Like, the gimmick that he has right now, it seems to be working. It's catching fire. Yeah, and uh, like like I said, it may be it's maybe corny, but the fact is he sells the whole thing of being the politician, of being a uh, like uh, the president of the X division kind of bullshit, and people want to get behind that because a the idea is fucking funny. It's a throwback to JBL's bullshit. Yeah, without the evil rich Texan, <laughs> without the evil rich Texan uh, uh, side of it, it's just the uh, it's just like, hey, I'm an asshole heel, and like, and B because he, like he's got the swagger for this shit, man. Folks like the gimmick, and folks le also legitimately want to be behind Mustafa Ali. And I don't know about you. But the sooner he can get that, uh, the, the the sooner he can move it up to the uh, main championship picture, the main event picture, the better. But then again, the argument can be made that uh, Mustafa Ali and his presentation for how he's handling uh, this his whole uh, like presidential campaign or whatever the fuck for of being the X Division champion can be seen as main event level for Impact Wrestling. I mean, it, it can be. I mean, TNT shit. Impact, I mean. He main evented he main evented no surrender pay-per-view with Chris Sabin for the X Division title. So, yes. Yeah, so you see what I mean? And more to the point, if he wanted to, Mustafa Ali can exercise option C and vacate the X Division Championship to challenge for the TNA World Title. But for right now, him being the champion and him going with this gimmick of being the political candidate running for office and everything, this is good. This is really good. It's just it's just a shame that WWE never gave him the opportunity to live up to his full potential. And that's their own damn fault. Yes, indeed. But now let's get to the main event, and it is a one-on-one -on -one clash uh, from two guys um, who are who are veterans in pro wrestling. Two guys who have a grudge against each other. Whoa, um, that's a big graphic, and uh, I'm glad that we got that fixed. Well, I guess with it being a main event graphic, it kind of fits. Of course. Uh, and it features Steve Macklin going one-on-one -on -one against Chris Saban in the main event. And this was pretty good. Um, the story of this match is that Chris Saban is working over the right arm of Steve Macklin. Steve Macklin was hurt, uh, was hurt in the right arm since his uh, match against Dolph Ziggler at Sacrifice. Uh, or Nick Nemeth. It's going right. to take, take me a while, folks. Yeah, <sighs> no, Nick Nemeth. Nick Nemeth. 
Like we'll, we'll like we we goof and we call, uh, joke about uh, uh, still calling Adam Copeland Edge, but that's just more for like flow of conversation and stuff. With Dolph Ziggler, we can we can go. We usually would go by Dolph or Ziggler, or if we, if that was our issue. But here we could say Nick Nemeth or Nemeth. And what is it easier for you to say Nick Nemeth to Dolph Ziggler? Uh, sometimes. Okay, fair enough. But that being said, yeah, no. Chris Saban, Chris Saban continues his ground game, works over the arm of Steve Macklin. Macklin was able to overpower Saban during this match, and uh, he's and he's of course the de facto, of course he's the heel, so the fans are going to boo the hell out of Macklin. Um, he tries to go for the running cross body that he calls it, like the cross, uh, the crosshairs. Chris Saban was able to duck out of the way and attack Steve Macklin. Um, and he at one point locks into Crippler Crossface, but Macklin was able to power out of that submission hold, tries to roll up, but Chris Saban was able to kick out after two. Um, and then afterwards, uh, Steve Macklin finally hit the crosshairs onto Chris Saban in the corner. He was about to go in for the KIA, which is the double underhook DDT. Chris Saban was able to counter that. And he tries to, and uh, he and uh, after some more back and forth action, Chris Saban finally hits the cradle shock onto Macklin to finally pin and win. Your winner, Chris Saban. God damn! And we kind of noticed that Saban, he's been, uh, he's been getting a little more of uh, that 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 edge to him, that heel heat, uh, uh in a way. But uh, I'm actually glad to see that uh, he's winning. Uh, I just wish that uh, the rest of his buddies were there to help him out. Jacko Empire from Casa Nostra saying, "Nice stream. I hope you chan your channel grow uh, grow up. I hope you channel grow up." Well, Thank you for that, Jacko Empire, Cosa Nostra. We appreciate uh, it. We appreciate you can help us by hitting subscribe and hitting like on our video and sharing this link to all your friends. If you have any nerdy friends who like video games, anime, pro wrestling, music, or anything of that sort, um, let them uh, send them our way. I mean, we're always happy to you know expand our audience. And that being said, yeah, no, great main event. And it was hard for me to watch because I just read a recent report that apparently Chris Saban and Alex Shelley have, the, the Motor City Machine Guns have departed from TNA. So the final tapings that we're going to be watching over the course of the next weeks are going to be their final tapings here in TNA Wrestling. What? The Motor City Machine Guns are free agents as of this, uh, as of this broadcast. As of this podcast, the, sorry. The, the, as of this stream. As of this as of the stream. Seriously? Yes. You're kidding me. I'm not kidding. And what the hell are we going to do? No more time machine? I've got to say, man. Yeah, no. Well, well, since the beginning of... Well, since t the TNA rebranding, there's been a lot of departures from the re from the wrestling roster. Deanna Perrazzo has departed from TNA and went to, over to AEW. Please the Motor City... Please don't guys. The Motor City Machine Guns have left TNA, and they're likely going to go back to the Independents or go to New Japan, where you don't know what's going to happen. Oh, I don't know if this is all a result Come of... to the promised land. They have cookies. <laughs> I don't know if this is all a result of Scott Damore being fired from Anthem Sports, the oh. same organization that runs TNA. Uh, but... You know, the more if if more people are leaving the TNA wrestling promotion, that's going to make things a little bit awkward and 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 make it hard for fans to invest in the product. No kidding, over here. I'm over here trying to figure out what to uh what uh, uh how what to think. Shit. Yeah, I know. That being said, um yeah, it's 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 it is sad, Vicente. It is sad, and yeah, I have uh, no idea where they're going to go for uh, going forward. Yeah, and Vicente also said another YouTuber Rambo Raff for Life always says the name Dolph Ziggler sounds like Dolph Lundgren had a son. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, and that's going to do it. Juan, ring that bell. Don't mind if I do. So this week's edition of TNA Impact was great. Um, going back to the to the hometown, it was great. Going back to the home place of ECW, that was awesome. The eight four one match is an incredible match concept, and I love to see them use that uh, a little bit more down the road. Don't use that stipulation too often because then you then you take away the luster from it. Then you uh, then uh, then you dilute it. Um, but I'd like to see that come back at some at some point by the end of the year. Um, the main event match was pretty fun. Chris Saban obviously getting the win over Steve Macklin. That was the right choice. I'm not really buying what Top Dollar is selling. And yeah, no, uh, I, I'm not buying. Especially the heel turn with Rich Swan. I think that's something they need to to they need more time to work on. Um, Josh Alexander at this point, I think um, I think it's high time we put it back in the championship picture, man. I mean, him wrestling Alexander Hammerstone and wrestling other contenders, like, that's good. But what else can we do with Josh Alexander, right? 
I wish I knew, because really, he is a main event motherfucker. He deserves to be a champion, and I will not rest until he is. And as for the departures from TNA, like... I don't know. I've, uh, I, I might be wrong. It might be just a coincidence, but I really hope that this doesn't lead to a mess, like uh, more departures from the wrestlers of TNA Wrestling. And if it does, that's going to be bad for the promotion. And it's going to speak v volumes about Anthem Sports. Well, here's hoping they can uh, pick their ass up about all this. Exactly. Now, this week's edition of AEW Dynamite, um, the main event match was a foregone conclusion. It was very obvious that Swerve was going to win the number one contendership match because Kanosuke Takeshita is great, but his luster was already sucked away thanks to Chris Jericho and Don Callis. And nice going. Yeah. Um, the opening the opening match, of course, was fun. Will Ospreay wrestling against Katsuyori Shibata was def is definitely one for the books. Um, me and Juan, we already have our difference in opinions and our, our arguments about Brian Danielson's video package. Like, it was a great video package. And um, I'm pretty, like, if this is how Brian Danielson's going to finish his year off, then, you know, honestly, like, we can argue about it, but we can't really criticize or judge or question Daniel Bryan's choice at the end of the day it's his choice if this is his final year and if this is how he wants to finish it then you know that's how he wants to finish at least he's choosing to step away from wrestling after this year after this year he's done wrestling full time yeah well we could say this all we want but at the same time we could still say it's fucking stupid it's... I could say it's fucking stupid. Why the hell are you mistreating yourself like this? Yeah, and also, on, and while we're on this subject, you know what? I'm get, It's getting stale, this whole storyline with the Young Bucks present, uh, sh bragging and boasting about their authority as EVPs. And by extension, you know what? I'm just going to say this right now. Tony Khan, stay the hell out of Twitter. Look at me. You got me to the point where now I'm chopping my leg again. Jose hasn't chopped his leg in a long time. I hope you're proud of yourself. Like, stop opening your mouth on Twitter and saying these inane things because you drive away your fans. The your new fan, fan base. Your potential fan base that you're trying to grow. Why would he? He's uh, got all his all the friends he could ever need. Oh my goodness. The Fatal 4-Way women's match, of course, was definitely a lot of fun. I wish we got a little bit more talking from Mercedes Monet instead of a few comments here and there, but that's neither here or there, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, something's got to be done with the Undisputed Kingdom. I think I've said enough about them. They, I, I think the faction is pretty much dead on arrival. Their first quarter is really, really fucking bad. Yeah, no fucking kidding. Now, this week's edition of WWE NXT, of course, the opening fight was a lot of fun. Sean Spears is an incredible, an incredible competitor, an incredible worker in the ring. I stand by my opinion that he's on the same level as Kurt Henning. If you put him in there, you're going to get a great quality wrestling match out of him. Um, and uh, the main event match, of course, the tag match was fun. Braun Breaker is a fucking freak of nature, dude. I don't know how he keeps pulling off these insane wrestling moves, man. Me neither. It's fucking ridiculous. I don't get it. It is incredibly ridiculous, and I'm all for it. The Prime Target video was great. I'm always happy to see these videos. Great uh, sports-based presentation for the WWE. In the, 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 in the uh, promo package of Mellow vs. Uh, Trick. Yeah, it's going to be great. I can't wait for that to happen. And as for Lola Vice, you know, um, I think I've said it. Like, Lola Vice losing to Natalia did not make any sense to me, especially when since Lola Vice took some time off away and she's back. And she issued the first challenge. She's back uh, to shaking booty. Yeah, she's yeah. back to shaking booty and issued the open challenge. And the first person to answer the challenge beats her? Ow. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, shit. I, yeah, no. It seems that, like, they kind of fumbled the ball there. Like, how did nobody up there say, like, that's not a good idea for Natalia to beat no Lola Vice? Kind of, he says. Yeah. Uh, kind of. I'm being nice. Also, uh, let me see here. Uh, stupid is having Mox having uh, is Mox having Claudio and Brian two great wrestlers in his stable. Yet Mox doesn't work technical style. Of course not. Yeah, that is stupid. Oh, like, he, he does, but his but he works it, but he does it in rare no, moments. He works, the, he works death jitsu. Ugh. He works death jitsu. He's the master of that. That's and, why he got choked out by some random gas station guy. Ah, and of course, Ridge Holland. I am not buying this retirement promo that he's made. Like, I think they've pretty much. We know it's work, but. He's the uh, but he's not even fucking 
seriously trying it. And of course, I forgot to mention the honorable mentions, of course, a great uh, kudos to Mustafa Ali for getting on the cover, uh, once again, for getting on the cover of Pete Pro Wrestling Illustrated Magazine for April. Uh, kudos to Darby Allen and working on a skate park project with Tony Hawk. I think that's a great use of his time out of the ring, helping helping the kids, man. And of course, kudos to Dijak for contributing into the research and the findings for CTE. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, I I, I can I definitely uh I'm definitely looking f- uh, forward to seeing what we got next up for here in NXT. Hell's yeah! And of course, um, yeah, no, two week to tune into next week's edition, which is going to be the go home show for WWE NXT before WrestleMania weekend. You know, it's going to be fun. It's going to be great. Panic attack! Time to panic, everybody. Time to panic, indeed. I don't have any announcements, or rather, I do, but I'll save the announcements for this Saturday. So for now, Juan, plug us away. Don't mind if actually, I do. before you plug us away, I actually want to extend a huge, huge, huge thank you and apologies to the people watching uh, for because of the uh, because of the hiccups that we had tonight with our te- with our tech uh, with our equipment. It wasn't and- even it wasn't even like the computer's fault. Something was happening between the connection of uh, that OBS had with the YouTube server. It wasn't us. It wasn't us that doing that did anything. It was legitimately fucking uh, what's his face uh, OBS and YouTube's fault for hiccuping and we don't know what happened we're pretty sure uh that we that there's no way that we could stop it but at the same time uh we would like to, uh, like as i said we want to thank you for your patience on this shit because dear god yeah no trust me this is something that we're going to work on and we're going to nip this in the butt folks but we do thank you very much for being patient and for coming back now juan plug us away Thank goodness. Don't mind if I do. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everybody in between, thank you very much for watching this week's live stream edition of Russell Rewind, hosted by Jose Castle. As he reviews for you the best of the worst of three of the most exciting professional wrestling programs in North America today, WWE's NXT, All Elite Wrestling's AEW Dynamite, and to- to- non-stop action's TNA Impact. Step into the ring every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, simulcasting on YouTube and Kick. Hit the subscribe and the follow button, ring the notification bell to stay up to date on all of our content, become an interblocker by hitting the join button, and until next time, continue to follow us on Facebook.com slash The Ravens Flock, Twitter.com slash The Ravens Flock 13, Instagram.com slash The Ravens Flock Online, kick.com slash the ravens flock and of course remember to hit the subscribe button and ring that tiny little notification bell right here on our flagship platform youtube.com slash the ravens flock humble home of the black files los amigos play wrestle rewind and the ravens flock all right folks thank you very much for tuning in to another exciting live edition of wrestle rewind for mr juan arouse i'm jose casabona and this is wrestling